Hi everyone, it's Ray from Pro String with uh, uh, somebody we're teaching who's uh, currently done one tennis racket. Uh, we're just about to start the main, uh, the main strings or the vertical strings on a head, head radical. Can't remember exactly. Head radical MP, 98 square inch, 1820 stringing pattern. We've already in installed the first two strings of the mains, one on each side. You've got two fixtures, six o'clock, 12 o'clock. And because this racket has eight holes at the bottom inside the neck of the racket, four loops, you could also call it at eight holes, you need to clamp at the top. Always, always, always pull the string underneath the frame of the racket. We're stringing this rack at 55 pounds of tension uh, with Pro String Pentagon. Five sided polyester, uh, co polyester string, should I say. And I'll leave it over to Kai, who's uh, our, new, uh, our new victim. <laughs> so he's never strong. He strung one racket yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Strung one racket for the very first time. He's not from a tennis background, so remember, we're going to pull. You, once you pull through one hole, you pull through the other one because now you've pulled all the string once. Now you're going to put it through and you're going to have to pull it all over again. All right, hopefully that angle works. It seems to work quite well. You can see pretty much everything. Then do I come? So think about it logically. So what are you going to do now? We need to pull the string, right? We need to tighten it. All right. So three on each side. So you've got how many have you tightened so far? Two on this one. No, no. you're gonna tighten one. Feel it. Really tighten one. Yes, yeah, so you tighten one. So you're gonna tighten the second, is what you meant, probably. Yeah. So pull that around. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there are two machines that we have here. I'm about to start a badminton racket, which I'll make videos of that another day. But for now. It's going to be pretty straightforward on how to do the vertical strings of right. a head radical MP. Loop it around. That's it. I'm going to put it a bit further away so you can see the uh, tension head doing its thing as well. So, so always think about it logically. I'm putting that string, this one here, the second one. So if it's coming here, right. I'll need to clamp here, right? Because if you were to clamp that with that, that, would, that doesn't work. So I'd have to clamp here to hold the tension of the whole string, yeah? No, no, no. That's our, that's our main clamp at the moment. That's what's holding the tension, right? If you yeah. release that like you did before. If you release that, then you're in trouble, right? So that one. So Kai just, Kai just pulled about four or five strings recently, um, five minutes ago, and he's having to restart because he took off the wrong clamp. Really, really important to take the right clamp off and put it back on. If not, you lose all the tension, as he uh, witnessed a moment ago. But it's all, it's all trial and error. All trial and error at the beginning. And it's just the way it is. And then this one I'll come back around to do. Yeah, so you're gonna do three on each side, right? So you've got the middle, you need to do three here, three, and then three again, three again, three again, so on and so on, because you've got nine vertical strings. This stringing pattern is 18 vertical strings, 18 mains by 20 crosses are also known as horizontal strings. So, yeah, it's okay, classic mistake. So you see how you didn't, you didn't go through the hole. <laughs> so go back, take it back all out. Yeah, 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 take everything out again. That's it. Now, so you take it out. You gotta go through here, right? Oh. <laughs> but it's great, I mean, this is why I kind of wanted to do videos now, that way, yeah, so I mean, you can even watch it later. I'll, put it, I'll probably put it on YouTube with your permission, and then you can watch it yourself. Going, okay, where did I go wrong? What did I do? And it's just, it's just very basic learning how to string. Thing. Yep. One, bear, bear with me one second, because I think while I was away, you might have restarted. Uh, no, you're good. Yep. Bear with me one second. Something's going on here, man. Okay, you've done it again. <laughs> you see, look. Okay, let's 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 try to do what Kai was doing. It doesn't look right, yeah. Let's take that string out. 
So again, you forgot to go through here. Oh. So remember, don't stop pulling the string now. You're going to go through, try to work efficiently, which will equal to a quicker time as well. And then yeah. Go there you go. <clears throat> and we're just stringing this back at 55 pounds of tension, which is exactly 25 kilos on the dot. 25.0. Uh, Kai is stringing on a Wilson Bayardo Light. Uh, the machine that I just showed you a moment ago to my to the in front of Kai it is a Wilson Bayardo original which has hydraulics you can lift the machine goes upwards downwards and it angles towards you stringing um, to why because it's better for your back if you incline the machine towards you uh, which is a great function to have you can really save your back um, someone like myself who is stringing all day and night it's now 8.32 UK time, we're in London, acting to be accurate, one of our workshops. <laughs> it's okay. So, yeah. We are not one. Yeah, cool. So you've got three on that side. Anyway, you can ignore that side. You can forget about that side. Don't worry, leave that side. No, 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 leave that side. That's fine. Let's chuck it over there. Now this one. Remember that. Three, three. Right. Isometrical. You want, you, you want to be able to... Um, so you can pull that string, don't need to find the end, because you need to, you've got the end there, so you want this one. You don't want it yet, under the frame. There's going to be a lot more noise going on in a second, because I'm going to start my racket. Not my racket, a client's badminton racket. Wait, what one do I uncamp? Is it this one? Say that? Do I uncamp this one? Uh, so wait, one second, release the thing, release. Remember, always under the frame, classic mistake. Press the button, yep, take the string out. Now you've got to go under the frame, take it out. Under the frame. Under, remember, always under. Because yeah. why? Because it's in line with, with the machine. Because if you go over, you're putting pressure down on the racket, which we want to avoid. Uh, and then you're also going to get a truer tension probably as well. might have wrapped it around the frame again, which you keep doing, <laughs> but you've got it, <laughs> which is fine, this is what I mean is, um, more than anything is try to remember, but this is a, uh, learning learning how to string properly can be, uh, it can be a bit of a painful process. <laughs> um, pull, 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 don't be scared, pull, 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 yep. Pull it stuck. Say again. It, so it doesn't wrap around the frame. Good, perfect. One second. Okay, that's fine. So I thought from the angle I was standing, I could I couldn't see the gap. But that's mm. good. You want exactly that, a little bit of gap. You don't want the clamp ever touching any part of the racket or the fixtures. Fixtures are these and these. Yeah. Oh dear. Don't follow me.
Okay, all of these guys had a phone call, people picking up rackets, and we've gone over the fence. So at the moment we're standing at three on each side, now we're going to do another three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So then we'll have six on each side. Exactly where I'm at on this badminton racket as well. <clears throat> Kai had a little boo boo again, he released the wrong clamp, unfortunately. So back to square one. Well, almost. I rapidly put him back to where he was, kind of. So I'm just hoping that um, these videos will help people kind of see right from their beginning, right from their starts as well, because you do get a lot of people that just buy a machine, and don't necessarily want to go do a course, um, they just want to learn how to string either for themselves and get good at it or to a decent level and then go on to start stringing for others and make money. Starting to get it now, aren't you? Starting to see your hands moving a bit quicker. Starts, it starts, this starts speeding up because obviously we've tried, we've restarted what three times I think on that. Is that the third or the fourth? Yeah, third. Third. So that's the third restart. So, but you now you start kind of through, okay. It starts. Yeah. The penny, the pennies dropped a bit, and they're like, okay, now I, I feel like until the next mistake, and they're like, ah, oh, not again. So always always try to stand like you see where I'm standing I don't move from here always stand behind it so your, your workstation let's say move the racket around you don't move around the racket I guess you could say <clears throat> louder so I'm not sure if that was my second one on this side what do you mean second right so once you go from three, you got to go to six. So just count them from the middle. No, no, no. Well, you can count from that side, but the side really that you're, what's the side you're working on at the moment is this one. You got one, two, three, four, five. So it's three and three, six. So you got one more to go. And then you do exactly the same uh, on the other side. But I think you've you've swapped sides accidentally because you've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, but it's okay. Not the end of the world. Again, small mistakes that we will see. That's what uh, I'm here for. Let's make sure we can get that always as uh, symmetrical as possible. Because if not, you risk deforming rackets and you want to be as nice as possible to the racket and the frame as we can be. Because you did four, I think, on the other side, you just gotta have four, four or even five. Uh, four, yeah. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. So you only got one more to go, actually. And then, and then because it's an 18, 20 stringing pattern, you have nine on each side, so it's three times three, nine. So then you'll have to do another three on each side. There you go. Very common at the beginning to uh, to miss a hole or, or, or two. So there, for example, that's where the pliers might come in handy. Yeah. So all you do is there. Gosh.
so I've done six now. Yeah. yeah, so all you do now is finish each side. You've got a three and three. Because it's 18. 18 divided by two sides, nine strings each side. Therefore, you've got three left on each side. So we're just walking through every single little step and every single little mistake that we can make. So now you want to turn the clamp around. Turn. Yeah. So that way you give, because it's quite chunky, right? You see the chunky there? Yeah. So then it starts getting in the way. So again, guys, this is a Wilson Bayardo light that Kai is stringing on. No, no pressure on the poor guy. Second rack and I'm already making videos. Must be thinking. I only met Kai yesterday as well. Met through a, uh, what was it? My, my wife put a Facebook, uh, yeah. uh, something on Facebook, I think in the in the local area. And Kai's mom saw it. And Kai, I think, is pretty eager or pretty, maybe even desperate to start making some cash. <laughs> true enough. Yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> uh, I was, I was originally going to just make videos of my own, but I thought, you know, perfect time to to just show everybody, see how you went, you did one, and then you went, pulled again. Not too bad, because you don't have much string left, but remember, one through, well, through one hole, and then straight across the other one, and then pull once. And avoid pulling twice, let's say. So, yeah. How many am I meant to do three, yeah? Say again? You so, have three. a look. So, that's a common mistake you just made, very common. Leave the, leave the clamp where it is, as long as you haven't um, um, loosened anything up. The base is still tight, yeah? And you have it on clamp. So have a look. Looks, does that look right to you? No. Right, so release, release the string. Have a little think. What can, where, where should the string maybe go? So it's a different string well, pattern to what hole. you did yesterday. I've missed the hole. Yeah, exactly. Common, very common. Because as a, as a kind of like, a, as a non-tennis player, let's say, you just, you don't really think. Even, even, I mean, I know guys play very high level, like pro, semi-pro, and the they would do exactly the same mistake. Say again. Can I put the clamp? It's right in the way. It's in the way? Yeah. Okay, so what you can, oh, wrong hole as well. I didn't catch that one because I couldn't see it. So you see how it's very close, and that one, yeah. you see how it kind of narrows off? Yeah. So we're going to pull that again. See that grommet is facing kind of because this racket's not new, it's been strong already. You can see the grommet's pointing pretty much that direction, isn't it? Yeah. So you can see the other one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip one, eight. Skip one, nine. Push. And so remember the knot, right? The knot. We're gonna put um. Uh, you gotta do 15 to 20 percent higher. We've got a knot button here that takes us to 60. We're going to do 62, so seven pounds more. So that way, you're always, always, always going to lose tension on that last string. That's why we go so high up on the last one. So you try to find the nearest hole, right, to, to do the tie off, to do the tie, the, the knot, which we use Parnell knot, Richard Parnell, good friend of mine who invented, supposedly. <laughs> um, but he's got a patent, I believe, as well, and it belongs to him. At least he's got his name on it. Uh, so, we sell that, yeah? Yeah. I'll let you do the next one. We've got another one to do here. But just a reminder, single, single, simple knot, I believe it's called. And then again, down, right hand at the bottom, pick up the string, don't sit, just straight up, yeah? Looks easy, <laughs> but you'll see. Let's see how you uh, make it look complicated. <laughs> in the nicest way possible. And then, going to go nice and close, not too close, but not too far away. There's nothing worse, there's nothing worse than than seeing a long piece of stri string hanging over here. It makes it look very unprofessional. Uh, and then when a lot of times when tennis players are playing, they hold the racket up here, 
and they can they can stab themselves. I mean, not stab, but they'll poke themselves and shuffle it in this one. I think. Or do I skip that one? Yeah. So you've got perfect example on the other side. You count. Have a little count if need be. Count. I think it was seven. Skip one. Eight. Skip one. Nine. Maybe. Could that be right? Count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip one. Eight. Skip one. Nine. So we'll all start counting from here. Say again? We'll all start counting from here. Yeah, well, we should have six, right? Because we stopped at six and then we'll finish them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got one more to go and then you'll skip, yeah? could be different at the bottom so no no it's actually this stringing pattern is different at the bottom uh, if you look at these look at the bottom here one two three four five six seven eight still not skipping skip one nine yeah so again if you just look at the hole like the, the, the white piece inside the grommet you can see it's kind of pointing upwards isn't it yeah so no skipping there so the bottom and the top can be different it be this one again yeah no no the other one nearest to you nearest to you Nearest the, the next, yeah, exactly. Use the um, the pliers if you need. Sure, I'm not skipping this one. No. Nope. So if you need the tool, exactly. Very important to have a set of pliers. Yeah, so the best way, you got it? Normally I would just grab it and lift it and that's it. But I guess that is another way of doing it. skip at the bottom but you do skip at the top on this rack yeah see that's very close to the other one yeah. doesn't kind of look right now you see how it narrows off it's wide here it's fine then it gets very narrow so that's the one I'm gonna just pull it again get a little bit closer Bang. yeah no one more I'll go for this one. Yeah, you're gonna skip one at the top, and I believe you'll skip a hole at the bottom as well. I think that's right. Yep, that's right. Now you're gonna press the the knot button on the uh, on the little pad over there. Press the knot button. No, no. Go back. The knot, the knot, knot button. There's a little knot on there. There's a picture of a knot. As in like tying your shoe knot or a knot, tying a knot. It's on the, it's on the top row. Yeah. What does it say now? 60. Huh? 60. Got 62. So you've got a little arrow pointing upwards, yeah? 62. Cool. Oh, do the clump. Yep. So I'm gonna okay. know. So now where do you think the hole the, the where do you tie the, the knot? You said the closest hole. Closest so hole available. That that because it's gonna share, right? It's a share. You're gonna share the same hole. The two strings. No, nope, because you've got to tie it onto something, right? So it's got to go, two strings go through one hole. So look at what I did before, look at the knot, have a look. Now search for exactly the same thing on the other side. So it's going to be there. Uh -huh. So 
Sometimes you might have to give it a good push and you may it's even need to, bit. yeah, there you go. Pull it all the way through. And then that go under. Uh, so you're gonna do like a single, single knot. Go over, under and bring it back through. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then exactly the same side, down, around, and through that little hole there. there. No, other side. Got to go around the string, same side. So you want to bring it now, using it. So you want to grab it. So bring it down. Yeah. No, you were right. Actually, sorry, you were right. It is that side. Yeah. Back through. No, no, through the literally through. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay, so now this little tool here is called a starting clamp. Right? Just hold it and put it. You're gonna hold it, and you see how there's lag here. Yeah. Just for the video, there's a bit of lag here. Yeah, that's going to disappear. Give it a pull, not too much, because you can break the string. You can see it's not there anymore, and bosh. Okay. I'll let you do this another knot, next knot, so I'm going to cut up some string for you for the crosses. So now we start the crosses, or horizontal strings, 18, 20, on a 16, 19, I would normally cut to 7 and a half, because it's an 18, 20, 20 being one, one number more, you need a bit more string, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This racket tells you where to tie the knot. Most rackets don't, I would say. So you've got two options here, you can tie, you can see how it says tie, cross, tie off, cross, tie off, cross. So you can choose, it doesn't matter which one you want it to go for, yeah, one of those, yeah. it goes through, and then you're going to do the knot. So go, what, go down, around and in, uh, yeah, just like what you did before, yeah, exactly, use the other hand, bring it back up and through, yeah, yeah. through here. Good. So this is where you want to be careful as well, because if sometimes you cut just the right amount, of, we're going to have plenty of string, right? But sometimes if you, let's say you leave yourself a lot, yeah. what happens is you're going to get to the end and you're in big trouble because you won't have enough string to finish the racket. And then what happens? You've got to start all over again. <laughs> so you want to be careful here. So just give yourself a little bit and you're just going to go see if you can do it with that little bit. And for me, it's easy because I can do it like with just small. Mm. So you're going to go down that side. No, no, sorry. This, this one here. Yep. yep. And back through under and through the loop. So one second. So let's see. No, it didn't happen. It's okay. So down, under, and through. Yeah. Yeah. Not this. It's not complicated. It's obviously not complicated. And then normally give it a little pull. Because you don't have to go crazy on this. It's called starting knot. It's also yeah. the Richard Parnell, but I use the Richard Parnell knot for everything. Looks good. Holds holds really well. Uh, and good to go. Because normally, so you'll see now when you pull the first string in, in a moment, uh, it actually, this, you see, this will tighten. You see the, the knot? Yeah. It tightens. Yeah. There you go. So we use, we're going to weave. We're going to weave two strings through, yeah? So we're on about 19 minutes now. So give or take, giving you, well, apart from all the reaping. <laughs> but I'll stop moving. Well, have a look, think logically. Where do you think? The first available hole, right? Yeah. Yep. And then we'll just go in and under. Yep. Doesn't matter how you start, it's the next one you need to worry about. That, 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 it, that it doesn't match. The bottom of the top string, yeah? Ah, the top string, and the bottom. I'm gonna move the camera onto myself a little bit. While well, you weave those couple. Just to show people a different, a different racket, racket sport even. This is how Kai's gonna look like one day. 
So I'm stringing also one in front, always weaving one string in front of the one that you're going to pull. Always pushing the string up, I don't know if you guys saw that, but pushing the string up. And then you'll see when I pull the string, I will... I'm not sure if I go through this one. So the next, the, the one, the hole closest to the top of the rack, let's say. So look at the other one. Look at where you went through here. Exactly the same opposite side, the next first hole. Oh. Yeah? So when I pull the string, I hold it. I don't want the string to go off like that. I hold it down. Which is that? Sorry? So do I go through all the other holes of those? You're going to go through. Here, do I just go through like that? You're going to go through here. That one. So I go under. Uh, so remember, if you under, you probably should be over. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So give yourself a bit of string to work with. And I'll just yeah. go on here. Mm -hmm. Then I'll pull it all the way through. Now remember your left hand or, or right, whichever. Yeah. Very important. If not, you burn the string. All right, back to Kai. one more so we're going to use what's called one in the front so you're going to always so like I'm, i've got one yeah i've got one then i'm going to do another one as well so my the next one yep yeah, the next available So I think, let me have a look. Uh, so you see under, under. So the first one's already wrong, which is over, over. So you need to start over to go under to be opposite to that, yeah? Wait, so it needs to be under. Mm -hmm. No, it needs to be over. Because you got to remember, the racket, the way the racket... Oh, the first, yeah. Exactly, the way the racket is, um, the way it bends, let's say, the, the curve of the racket, it's starting to open up, and then it closes down so at the bottom. So, yeah, put it through again. So you've probably got a string in the way, good, yeah. So you probably need to go over and then I think.
we'll hold it, we'll go through this one. Um, hmm? No, the second one, eh? we're gonna follow the order. There's one here, right? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of that for the next half an hour. <laughs> Same thing over and over and over. What we'll probably do is turn off the camera maybe. I'm sure people probably won't <laughs> watch all the way through, right? They'll, they'll uh, be like, okay, I get, the, I get the idea. And then we'll turn it back on few minutes when you when you've done some progress okay so before we turn it off you got to leave yourself a decent amount of string yeah, here so exactly now turn it around so right, just all these kind of like small things that can be quite yeah. useful exactly just follow the string if you're always uncertain what which which side of the string you need to pull just follow and the string clamp Pull the string through it and weave again. Now use your hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Very important. If not, you can really damage the string. That way it's out of your way, remember? Pull and just push up, yeah? So you want to probably stop around now, give yourself enough string, exactly, now you've got enough, because if you keep going then you've got to pull it out again, just the small things that take time to remember. Okay, so I've got to do this one. Mm -hmm. Nope, uh, I can't see your hand in the way. This one. Yeah, that's right, so remember, just follow, uh, follow that, yeah, exactly. So, how come you took off the clamp? Oops. Always leave the clamp. It's not like the mains uh, or the vertical strings, yeah? So, you've clamped here. Um, okay, that seems to be fine, but that's not. So, you clamped here. So, remember, always remember, follow the string. So, if I follow here, I need to be here. Because if I clamp here, I've done, I'm not doing anything. Remember, when Okay. Uh, not both, so that would that would have been here on the first one. 
Yeah? That's your backup, your backup clamp. So if you do mess up, you've yeah. got the backup clamp. In this instant, you kind of clamped in the wrong place, but at least you had the backup in a way, in, a, in an odd way. You saved yourself a bit there. There was only one string, so there's not the end of the world. Which string is being pulled? This one. Okay, so that's exactly where the clamp needs to go. Exactly. So you're pretty much alternating clamps now. Right. One side, one side. Right? So you're not using the same clamp twice. Touching almost every string, pretty much. Yeah. Well, I'll do it again. That's right. Correct. Yeah, you're right. 